let's go. Let's talk about the market. <laughs> Everything's it's, fine. It's actually, do you know what, from the last time we spoke about it, it's, it's worse than what It's got worse from then. What's up, YouTube? It's James from Robin Henry Watches. Getting into what? What sort of an episode is going to be? What series is it? I don't know. We haven't. It kind of fits into a few. I think oh, we're right, going to go with this. Is more of a dialed in because we're not talking about one particular watch. We're talking oh, okay, about all enough. of the watches. Uh, let's do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the one six zero one Datejust, the Wide Boy, as they like to call it. Wide and Boy. It, and it's a nice rare no loom dial. It's super clean. It got dropped in our first vintage drop. Um, as of the time of filming, it's available. By the time this comes, hopefully it's gone. But I if don't not, you calling it saying you dropped it? <laughs> dropped it into the shop. It's a vintage <laughs> drop. It's not hard to Slam get. It's a vintage dunk. drop. I'm not dropping watches. Literally, it's figuratively like bombs into our web shop. Uh, 1968, super clean. Uh, comes on the bracelet, but I'm selling it on straps as well. Uh, we've got two included. Uh, Absolutely I think it's beautiful. A nice maroon one and a blue one. Right. Cool. What are we talking about? We always harp on about obviously retail price not being the retail price anymore because market rate is the ridiculous. Price is the price, yeah. At what point does something go from being worth its retail price to worth its market price? At what point oh, do you okay. think, I'm going to part with my cash, it's worth me buying this? I'm selling you a Rolex Daytona, steel, black dial, black bezel, retail 9650. What price are you paying right now before so, you can check the market? What would I what would I pay for one right now? For, for, okay, no, that's gonna be different. What would you pay for you? Okay. So reason? what what would be my tolerance point? Yeah, yeah. what are you prepared to pay? Where where are you okay with it? Fifteen. When when not long after this first came out, I got offered a white dial, black ceramic for twelve, thirteen grand mm. and I said no. What? Would you would you have been able to hold it though? I mean, no, I wouldn't have. At that time, this was before I was, um, you know, dealing. I sound like a drug dealer here. Before I was dealing, um, I, I I could have afforded it, but I couldn't have afforded to keep hold of it because some something else would have come along which I would have wanted, and I would have had to have sold it. Yeah. I remember thinking at the time though, like a twat. I was like, it's kind of high. Yeah, it will come down a bit. You have to remember that went just before that. You know, these things used to sell at just over retail. They were yeah. hard to get. But... Yeah, just a little over, yeah. Make, um, makes you wonder, though. I think though. they peaked, like the white dial peaked at around 40. Yeah, well, this tops. this this black dial peaked just a little over. It's at 32-ish, give or take, at the moment. But that's, that's come down a little bit. I mean, bit. is it a good buy at 32K? No. Is it? I mean, obviously, this is all subjective. And depending where you're looking at it, if you're wanting to talk about investments uh, at 32K... No, I mean, listen, is the market going to go back up? Probably yes, but I've got no idea when. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, and I actually, just to, just to be clear as well, I think this correction in the market is a good thing. I've spoken about that. I do want to continue to see these hype pieces come down. Um, so, and so they should do. I mean, we've had to discount a couple of modern pieces, but that's Ouch. okay. Yeah. Um, I've got no problem with that. The, the prices for this, I mean, I don't deal in this hype stuff. Um, Okay, well, let's so, go middle ground. So say we're in 2021, so a year ago, mm -hmm. and I'm offering it to you at 26. No. No? I mean, Not listen, nearer. would that have been a good price to pay for it then if you had the intention of flipping it? Yes, because uh, you would have made money. Um, would it have been a good price to pay to keep it? Potentially, yes. Um, so I don't know. I'm happy to pay market price for watches. I've paid over retail for loads of watches for my shop, we know. personally. We know. <laughs> right? Um, so I have a tolerance for it, which some people don't, because some people are like, okay, I'll never pay retail. And I'm yeah, like, well... Market rate is relevant to anything. I mean, sorry, I'll, I'll never pay the market rate. I'll only pay retail. And I'm like, well, you'll probably never own the watch or you're going to be waiting a long time rather than just enjoying your life. Yeah. So I, I can see it from both angles. But even for me now, 26 grand, it's not a 26 grand watch handle one i've had quite a few daytonas personally and they're a cool watch even my gold that, that 150 percent markup is going to feel yeah. very cheap even after my while. solid yellow gold one was not a twenty six thousand pound watch right. at that time so 
Didn't feel like it. Let's drop the retails a little bit. Oh. We'll go to let's <laughs> let's go down to two thousand seven hundred and twenty-four pounds, to be precise. God, we're in the gutter. We're in the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer three hundred, the forty-three mil <sighs> variety. Out of curiosity, where do you think that's trading right now? What new? Yeah, uh, the under retail. Two one, so we're about twenty-five percent drop. You paying two one for that? No. What's the new ones that just come out? I think they're 40 or 41 millimeter, 41, the silver and blue. I think, I think it's like nicer. the silver and blue. Yeah, yeah. Those ones lesson. are actually, and so they've done it in a quartz one, I think, in a mechanical movement. Mm. But the price points they've come out, they're okay. But this 43 millimeter, you know, my feelings on that is it's too big anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, sorry, so it's 2,600. 27. Is that, is that a mechanical movement? I'm mm. assuming. Yes, I think so. Um, will I, what will I pay for it? Uh, £1,500. I mean, it tells you all you need to know about depreciation or appreciation in this case that it's gone from two seven to two grand to two one. Uh, do you know what I think is years. worth pointing out though? A lot of people just think that everything goes up. <laughs> it doesn't. This has gone up £100 in a year. Most new, Average. Most new watches you can buy at a discount. That's just straight up facts. Yeah. Um, if you think you know you're safe in it, you're not. The only way you can be like a good example is I bought my wife's uh, watch for it. You know, it's got everything against it to go up in value. It's an Amiga. It's got diamonds, mm. uh, original diamonds. It's quartz. Don't think you watch. even know what year it's from. Um, no, it's got it's got no paperwork with it. But I bought that in two thousand fifteen, and it's gone up a tiny bit. Or at best, I'll see my money back. Yeah. So the only way you're going to make or hold your money on a lot of watches is you've got to keep them for a decade. Mm. Um, you know, we're talking Amiga, Zenith, Blancpain, Tagheuer, Breitling. Tudor. Uh, Tudor, yeah. They all lose money. Yeah. So, you know, everyone just thinks, oh, there's, you know, like we get a lot of inquiries where people are like, okay, I'm selling this. I want to make my, get my money back or make a bit of money. And I'm like, mm -mm. I'm, the, 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 I don't it's... like to be the one to have to break it to people, but, you know, they're just not. The reality is it's not a watch market growth anymore. It's, it's a Rolex market growth. Yeah. AP and even then it. you can't grow everything on Rolex either. Well, you know, Tag Heuer is a Rolex. You know, I've said this, what, that there's some lines in there which are really good. Monaco, mm. example. Aqua Racer line, you know, no offense if you own one. Uh, I've said this before. I've, I've personally bought and owned one before and it's dog mm. I mean, I had the quartz one. It was, it's dog you know, yeah, biggest anti climax. Um, so yeah, no, I wouldn't pay more than fifteen hundred quid for it. Um, but I think you can easily look to buy a new tag Hoyer, like something like that, at about thirty odd percent off mm. retail for sure. It hurts. I mean, like, even look at you know the, the and your AD can discount that for you because their margins are high. Yeah. So you know, if especially your AD, you know, the the margins in like grey market dealers and pre owned dealers, people like me, you know, at best we're looking at a gross profit margin of about 10%. So our net is much lower than that. But these guys, they're working on something like this, they're working at 40 odd percent GP. Exactly. They can give you a discount. They don't walk out there and call someone else up and get it for a cheaper price. Exactly. Even Trinity watches, you know, you've got to have the right thing. A lot of you will still lose money on because there's no one who wants to buy it. No one's got the money, especially recession time. Well, yeah, I mean, even yeah, if you go and let's say you buy a new Rolex or Daytona from uh, an aftermarket, dealer, I say aftermarket, you know what I mean, grey yeah, market yeah. dealer, pre-owned dealer, whether it's a new watch or pre-owned Rolex, if you go and look and sell it the next day, yeah, of course you're going to lose money because the dealers have to make a margin on it. Yeah. Now, in the market that we were at before, you know, a month or so ago, you'd be pretty safe after about a month, you've got your money back and you're going to make some money because the market was just climbing at an unsustainable rate. Um, I guess we thought we, it would continue throughout this year. I certainly said in my 2022 prediction I video. I don't think we were expecting yeah. Russia to invade Ukraine, though, or no, I, China to go zero COVID. No one, I wasn't party to that conversation. Sorry, China or Japan? I don't I wasn't listening. COVID. I mean, you get countries wrong with the time, but, you know, <laughs> I, you know, no one told me that they, Russia was going to go and do that, like... I wasn't involved in the conversation. Could, could have done with the heads up, really. Or, you know, China with these zero tolerance lockdowns that they're doing. But it is what it is. And, and ultimately, it will be a good thing. £19,500 retail. Where are we? Or what is it? 
That's what I'm asking you. Where do you think we are? Nine, uh, Royal Oak. Royal Oak, hang on. I was gonna, if not, I was going to say a bash one overseas. Um, what are you willing to pay for Royal Oak today? You love the Royal Oak I do right like now. Royal Oak, but you know what, right? I presume, is that the 40, 41 steel? Yes, yes. For me, I think the retail price point is bang on. That's a lot of money for a stainless steel three-hander, right? Yeah. Do you know what else is a lot of money? What? 55 grand. It's not worth it. 55 grand is the Listen, average trade price. Even if you price. think, I know it's not a comparable watch, but even the Daytona, the retail price of 9650, I think you said. Yeah. And by the way, for people watching this, this is Guernsey prices, so it's yeah. fat free. Yeah. That's why they're sounding cheap. If you're like, who the fuck's going to do this? It's fat free. Uh, so it's UK price, less fat. Um, that's a lot. I mean, it's twice as much as a Daytona yeah. that's got a chronograph movement. Um, I know Audemars Piguet is, you know, it above Rolex. Sorry, mm. you know, to break the news to some people, but it, it is. It, it is. It's a high level. But, I mean, listen, if someone offered me one and they were like, James, 25 Gs, I'd probably push to 25 grand. Okay. But only. 30? No. No? But only because. Box and papers. If I did, the only reason that I would <laughs> is because. I knew I could flip it for mm -hmm. 50 right in this current market. But if you're just saying to me, you know, right, forget all of that. You can buy the watch and you're going to keep it. 20 grand, 25. Okay. Listen, it's you, haven't, you haven't got a watch right now and you really like the Royal Oak. Yeah, 20, 30, 25. 32. No. 31. No. 30. We're not, we're not being 29. Like, <laughs> listen, you know, it's... Is it is it worth it? Even based on, you know, we're not going to go into the, you know, the value of the sum of its parts and whatnot because... You know, that would be an even more painful well, conversation. Here's the sum of its parts. Two years ago, it was 20 grand. Yeah, that's right. And that was... That's that was, trading basically at retail. And that was at a good point in its, in its product life cycle. Yeah. I mean, from not, not saying from the 70s is, is inception, but, you know, before the market was crazy, but it was still good in 2020. Yeah. What's interesting is I couldn't get much data between 20 and 22. That shows how few are actually being resold. That they, I couldn't even get a benchmark for 2021. It's a cool watch. I'd love another Royal Oak, um, but I'm not about that life. What that says is you're going to have a hard time saying when you do, you'll make it big. Listen, maybe I sell the house and I buy a couple, but, you know, <laughs> I don't think it's going to go down well. My bonus round. Doesn't know how to do watch sizes at all. Oh, God. This one surprised me. Black Bay Chrono, steel, black dial and bezel. Tudor. So, sorry, the, the steel one with the black dial. Yeah. And sorry, what colour bezel? Black bezel. Mm. 3,520 at retail. Yeah. Let's play our favourite game, higher or lower? What do I think it's going for? It might be a bit higher, but personally, I, I would pay retail for it and I wouldn't pay above. 5,2. Mm. And it's been a steady climb, four five last year, five two now. Listen, and I it's had, come down. I had the more desirable white dial, mm. and I sold that for four three, and I was lucky to get out of it, and I didn't make anything on it. I just got out of it. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to bring this one in, but I just I had looked out of curiosity, and I was I was really surprised. So it was Tudor, that steady climb again. Tudor is going through a weird thing now. So they've literally just gone in the last week week before as so you're watching mm. this they've just gone basically inquiry uh, only on nearly everything in their range other than the real sh what's the ones are they uh not the royals because they're, they're actually quite a nice range but oh, the, they, the other dress kind of glamour ones. range or something that's isn't the it? one yeah, you can buy the that worst name ever. and they've left some of the less desirable black bays that you can just buy it's but interesting like, they've timed it pretty much at the same time as the ranger as well yeah. Now everyone's going off about the Ranger, but the Ranger when he got dropped a few years ago, yeah. I bought the Ranger new out of Mappen and Webb in Guernsey. I think I paid eighteen hundred pounds. So it's a few years back, maybe 2016, 17. Mm. They drop it, and I thought it was a really good kind of you know cool field watch. And now they bought it back and just repackaged it and resold it under some other story, yeah. uh, marketing story, which I get. And everyone's raving about it. I'm like, listen, it was in the range the whole time. No one was buying the damn thing, exactly. and now. It, even that is inquiry only. I'd Basically, argue it's worse than its predecessor as well. I've only had a quick look at it because it didn't really interest me, but on visuals, I'd agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all inquiry only. Yeah. You know, even like the ones that haven't sold as well previously, like the Pelagos uh, or Pelagos or however you're wanting to say it, um, everything. Lock I, it down, no more discounts. It's a shame that Tudor's going down that route because before the pandemic, 
Tudor was still closed off to us in the Channel Islands because they wouldn't sell it online. Yeah. And then they put it online during um, COVID, which was great. Um, so it made it more accessible to everyone. Mm. Because if you didn't live near one, you couldn't get them. The, the and Rolex now, is to Amiga. Now it's going back the other way. Um, that it's inquiry only. Like, do yeah. me a favour. Yeah. I mean, will they pull this off? I don't know. It's either going they to go pull... very well for them or very badly. If the watch market went into a decline, it won't work. Yeah. But if it if it continues to be strong, and I know we're talking about there's a bit of a price correction and downturn at the moment, but let you know, let's be realistic about it. The prices are still way up in retail on, on some of these Rolex models. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some Tudors which trade at premium, but I've been burnt on this personally, and I've been offered things like um, you know the fixed bar Pelagos, yeah. um, which is a cool watch, um, but I've been offered that a few times at over retail, and I've been like, no, nah, I'm not touching it now. Um, obviously you've got the new two-tone GMT that's generally still going over uh, retail. Um, not me though, oh, no, I sold, root beer. I, I sold it below retail, the root beer. Um, it just makes you wonder. The ones. They, they're good watches, but are they worth over retail? No, and I, I can tell you from personal experience because they're very hard to sell even at retail. Mm. Um, you know, I turned down the Black Bay Pro from an authorised dealer a month back I could have bought, I mean, at that time, they had everything available and you could just buy it. And I thought, that's fucking cool. Like, that was actually more of a thing to lead me into the brand mm. than, you know, this whole... It, it makes you think, are they going to get the Rolex bug, so to speak, become unattainable and then become appealing because of that? I just think this whole thing with the registry, how, like, now you have to do this whole biography... I know not all of the Rolex stores are doing this, but there's a lot where, you know, they have to get background information on you. And I'm just like... It's, it, it's it makes you wonder, because this, this loses one of their best sort of competition points with Amiga, but is it worth it to well, get that status? Well, from, from their point of view, no, because they're making it this exclusive thing like Rolex. Yeah. So, But from perception, they'd always been their answer to Amiga. If you couldn't get Rolex, you get Tudor. Well, Amiga wouldn't agree with that. Amiga oh, of would course, Amiga wouldn't agree below. with that. And I think you could. I think that's a fair comment. Actually, I still think, from a quality point, Amiga is still above Tudor. Mm. In terms of desirability, though, I think Tudor's overtaking them mm. because we're, because Amiga is is part of the Swatch Group and it's you know it's it's a listed company, uh, you know, for on the stock market. You got to keep pumping out product. Shareholders want their dividends. Being part of the so, Swatch Group know, is a real, like, uncool thing. It's like having the really uncool yeah, dad. I mean, listen, you've got things... There's brands under the Swatch Group which just should be doing way better than what they are. Breguet, Blancpain, um, Longines... I mean, don't get me wrong, I know Longines is very successful, but from what Longines was to what it mm. is now, Breguet, I, it's, these it's, are great brands, but it's like... It's a weird family to be in. You you're in there with Flim Flam, you know, whatever it's called. The way that you... Flip you increase flag. your share price and you and keep giving out dividends to your shareholders. You've got to pump out product yeah. and a lot of it. And unfortunately, that goes against the model which has worked for Rolex. Mm -hmm. I mean, so let's be honest. Half of Amiga's new pump outs have not exactly been too dissimilar from Rolex either. The the problem which which Amiga did as well this year is when they did all their new watches. They they weren't ready to buy. I actually thought that they were because they got listed everywhere. Yeah. Tudor but, did straight away. So did Rolex. I mean, obviously, getting them is another mm, thing. Mm, yeah. But yeah, Amiga were on the old model where they show you their new watches. Oh, and you can buy them six months later. Mm -hmm. like, in this world... Again, it's like they're trying to position wait. themselves to look like Rolex. The difference is Amiga were making them available six months later. Rolex they just should... were making you wait. And you know what? They, they've waited the wrong time. The market isn't as good as what it was. They should have. Those watches should have been in stores... Mm. Ready to. Uh, I mean, ready, you wonder whether that was a conscious decision or whether that was. No, a, a lot of brands have always been on that cycle. They they show you the watch uh, like typically like back in the day, yeah. uh, Basel World, and then they'd be available, you know, kind of September time onwards. But you know that that's an old model. Mm. So other mm. brands have moved on. But anyway, off topic. Cool. Uh, that's, that's a wrap. I think that's a wrap. Go to the shop. Do you just notice I've actually people watching? They're like, "Why is he got his watch anymore?" Why is it gone? It's so bloody hot. It's ridiculously warm. Um, it's like I don't... I'm half keeling over here. 
It's saying it's 27, but... I, it, don't, it, I don't buy it. It feels warmer than 27. It's, it's, it's very wrong. Anyway. Um, hopefully we'll be a 1,000 subscribers by then. If we're not, please, for the love of God. We have, we've got like 16 subscribers to go. It's 15. 50. Have mercy. It's painfully slow. Cool. That's, that feels that's awkward. it, I think. Right, yeah, cool. We, we out. End up. Bye. Thank you.